I don't think that we will ask the same questions about privacy, about information freedom, about the relationship of the citizens to the government in 30 years from now. Because we are building now the systems that will define these questions. And whether we get it right or wrong really depends on us. Because the decisions will be made either by a big corporation or a big government or democratically in light of our fundamental rights. What the choices are, because often people are not even aware that there is a choice, that you could have a more open and decentralized internet, that you can fight terrorism without undermining our privacy. My name is Thomas Lohninger. I work for Epicenter Works. I'm the executive director. That's a digital rights organization based in Vienna. I've been doing human rights basically since my teenage years. Uh, like when I started in the field of digital rights, we had uh, maybe one or two laws in one legislative term of four or five years. Now we have 30 laws every year that are tackling core issues of digital rights. There are far more powerful stakeholders that now understand technology, that now have their vision of technology, ready to be adopted in legislation and complex systems that are very hard to change. So it needs the voices that cry out for fundamental rights and that also give the practical advice on how to do this. That sometimes means writing legislation that has limitations on what you can do with personal information. Um, but it sometimes also means fighting concrete systems like new surveillance systems. And my work often uh, contains a, a heavy element of reading legislation, draft legislation, looking into technical standards, internal discussions, formulating a position, and then translating all of these complicated things into layman terms, giving weight to fundamental rights and the perspective of citizens, of users, of workers, also unemployed people in these complicated systems to make sure that their rights and their dignity are protected by technology. One of the things that we did in the pandemic was work on the EU digital COVID certificate. And actually I was happy with the results. So a lot of the suggestions that we made to increase the privacy were taken on board. The RARE program was uh, recommended to me. There are very few leadership programs for civil society and I thought it would be very interesting and potentially also uh, eye-opening to uh, have these types of exchanges with so many different NGO fields in different countries. This program benefits from the diversity of its stakeholders and the fact that we are different actually gives us more reason to, to work together. It were fringe actors and weirdos and hippies that created the internet that we have today. A very different internet would be possible if we're not careful. Then it was the idea of having decentralized systems that are owned by everybody and not just one person, where the shareholders are the users and where people have control, where technology is respectful of their rights and uh, limits the amount of data that it collects about us. Back then we used to joke we have to explain the internet to the politicians. Now they very much understand the internet. It's just very different versions of what digital technology should look like and who it should serve. We now have like 30 million incentives to create the next Facebook or Google, but almost no incentives to create a new Wikipedia. One thing we did was we prevented the government database that would otherwise have contained all of these cars' movements wherever they went in Austrian highways. Another form of mass surveillance we could kill. The work of civil society, of NGOs, you can understand like the immune system of our democracy. We are fighting the bad things that are happening. We are preventing so much that would make society worse and more unjust. And we're doing this because we care for others. There's this the core value that unites us all is solidarity.